Welcome to Numerical Methods. Yeah, as you saw in my teaser that actually my finite difference approximation of the partial derivative of the exponential function was becoming worse if the shift size is becoming smaller. So this was here our little teaser. If a shift size of 10 to the minus 8, yeah, we got an approximation error of 10 to the minus 9, which is quite okay. But if you go to a 10 to the minus 14, yeah, actually we got an approximation error, yeah, which is a factor 1,000, 10,000 larger. Yeah? And you can go to 15 and see that you have a very large approximation error. To understand what's going on here and why this is going wrong, we have to understand how the computer is actually performing arithmetic operations. We have to understand computer arithmetic. And this is a very short uh, session I, I do, uh, but it's really too, uh, very nice to have seen this uh, once and to recall this and also to check this because it can easily destroy all your uh, results. I will start with the representation of numbers in the computer, yeah? integers very quickly, then floating point numbers, because we will mostly work with floating point numbers, double precision, floating point numbers, single precision, floating point numbers. And then in the following session, we will discuss floating point arithmetic. So a high level programming language like Java, C++, C sharp, whatever, MATLAB, usually hides these details from you. Okay, but this is a little bit dangerous, yeah? You have operations like exponential function plus minus, and maybe naively you believe that all these operations are just the mathematical operations, yeah? Okay, this is maybe not true, yeah? So things can go wrong and the programmer needs to be aware of this. What I will discuss here related to the floating point numbers is the IEEE 754 standard. Uh, and this standard is implemented more or less. Yeah? So there are um, deviations in some details um, in many modern programming languages. So you find it in C++, in Java, but also in frameworks like MATLAB, uh, you have this uh, floating point standard. Let's start with integers. So an integer number is internally represented in binary form, representing all integers, say k in z, that are in a certain interval. So actually here, my writing integer.min value, integer.max value is code, yeah? Yeah, as you can sometimes guess uh, from the font. So we can just ask, for example, the computer, what is the smallest number you can represent? What is the largest number you can represent? Maybe I just try this. One second. <clears throat> So maybe I just try this. Let's create a new package for our um, experiments. So this is now, say, numerical methods lecture, computer arithmetic. And let's create an integer arithmetic experiment. So create a new class, which is called my integer arithmetic experiment. I would like to have a main method so I can run this. And I can maybe just uh, create integer min value. So I can just ask the inter integer class, okay, give me the min value. And I can maybe create integer max value. Okay, and maybe I can just print them out. So I would like to see this one 
and I would like to also see the other one. Oops. Yeah, let's run our little program and you see, yeah, this is the range between which the computer can then uh, represent these integer numbers. So you can you can actually hover here over that and you get the Java doc and you see this is the constant holding the maximum value an int can have, yeah, two to the power of 31 minus one. So actually you have these bounds. Yeah, then it's up to you how you choose the bounds yeah, or up to the uh, standard, how the standard uh, describes these bounds. So here it is that we have an integer min value of two to the power of minus 31 with a minus and an integer max value two to the power of 31 minus one. Yeah, So you have two to the power of, of 31 negative numbers, two to the power of 31 minus one positive numbers, plus the zero, yeah? So you have two to the power of 32 numbers represented by the 32 bits. A small question, what happens if you add one to integer max value? Maybe you can think a little bit for yourself. I get an error. Hmm. I get zero, I get warning. I get a negative number, a positive number. What do I get? Yeah. It stays the same number. I'm I'm at a bound. Yeah. So there are a lot of possibilities. Let's just try it out. So I create some integer. So maybe have a small separator line, create an integer. So I, yeah, so I is now integer max value. Oops. And create I plus one. So I plus one is I plus one. And let's print these guys. Okay, I and I plus one. And maybe I also print a check. So let's maybe check if I plus one is larger than I. Okay nicer and let's run our little program okay and what you see is that i jump from the integer max value to the integer min value oh, i jump to this guy and i plus one larger than i is false so this is maybe a case that does not affect you very often but you see that fundamental principles yeah, from mathematical from mathematics yeah, are violated. You know? So you have to understand a little bit what's going on here. So this is our experiment. Again, you can check out this code here at this uh, location if you'd like to play with it. And the answer is that we jump to mean value. And yeah, what's happening, you can easily depict it here. If you add one, yeah, you jump to the min value, you are going around in circles. Yeah? Also, if you add a larger number, yeah, you are going around on this circle. So put uh, differently, you can say that my integer arithmetic is an arithmetic operation on an equivalence class. So because now you have to distinguish two things. There is the mathematical function g, yeah, for example, plus, minus, whatever, yeah, which you would like to apply to your two integers, yeah, i and i. Uh, so um, my, my two arguments, a and b, are in the set i, so the set of integers that the computer can represent. But the result of the mathematical function can lie outside the set i. So it can uh, jump out. And of course, the computer implementation of this function, so the G tilde, this has to lie inside the I. Yeah? So there is another function, the G tilde. This is the corresponding computer implementation. And we have to tell how the result of the true mathematical function that could lie outside of the set I 
is mapped back to our set. You know? And this is done by saying that the two are equal yeah, up to, say, the corresponding shift here, so modulus 2 to the power of, and then the amount of numbers that we can represent, so modulus, the number of equivalence classes that we have. So this is how integer arithmetic works. Again, does not maybe affect you very often, but you see that things are maybe different compared to yeah, what you what you would expect, and you have to be a little bit careful. This is the example if integer size is a four, so we have four bits. Four bits are 16 numbers. Uh, so maybe we choose eight negative numbers, seven positive numbers, and the zero. And you see then you have this circle. So for example, if you would add to the five here, some number, yeah, say one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so five plus five equals minus six. Yeah, that was uh, a peek uh, into integer arithmetic.